Hi, so in a previous video we made this thing, which we used to run an arc furnace. And um, I think the video is called Mel Melting Metal with Water. What it actually is, is a liquid rheostat. Or if you like, a liquid variable resistor. I mean, in this form it's fixed because we screwed the plates down. So it acts as a current limiting device. Now a lot of these things, like this arc welder, uh, sorry, this arc furnace, it needs a very high ampage. And what we effectively did was create a short circuit, but we put a current limiter in it. And that was how we were able to run it. And we plugged it into the mains and ran it off of AC. Because plugging things into the mains and running them off AC is often a bit scary for folks, even though that's exactly what they do every day. They use a light bulb. It still scares them. So I thought we'd have a look at doing it from a battery where we have a DC supply. Then we build a liquid resistor, which again, remember, is going to be a current limiter and do some welding with it. Because typically welding needs somewhere around 80 amps or so at some voltage between sort of 24 and 48 volts, somewhere around about there. And if you bother to take apart your welding machine, what you'll actually see is a great big chunky transformer, because it's working off of 110 or 240, with a slidable core in and out. That's what that um, setting on the front does. It pulls the core in and out to uh, change the voltage, because it is in fact a variac. Now, you don't have to have that. Sometimes they're just tapped directly. They're the even cheaper machines. But we can use this um, resistor that we built, and we can use it to actually protect ourselves from overflow of a current with a lead-acid battery, which, remember, at cold cranks, can generate 400 to 600 amps, depending on the battery type that you're using. So you can use a battery directly. You just hook up a couple of batteries, connect one to a piece of metal and another to a welding rod, and it's going to weld. But it has no current limit on it. And this will give us a bit of current limit protection so that we can actually weld with water with a degree of safety. So we're going to build that machine. So let's get on with it. Okay, so to make this thing really is a piece of cake, what you need is a plastic tub and a not very big one either. This one is uh, 10 centimetres by 12 centimetres by 12 centimetres, so pretty small. In there we need to put some metal contacts, some metal plates. Now I'm using this stuff which is sheet aluminium, just because I've got a lot of sheet aluminium and it fits really rather nicely. You don't have to use alley, you can use stainless steel, ordinary steel, a bit of copper, whatever it is that you want to use, as long as you get two lumps of something that sit in that tub. Now with these plates it's really easy because I just cut a block of wood and if I put that block of wood in there, then it's going to be relatively firm. In a minute I'm going to put a couple of screws in there. If you're doing something like rebar, then you just drill two holes in your block of wood, stick your rebar in and skew your, screw your wood to your plastic, and that will do you just fine. Now I'm going to use a couple of screws on that to hold everything together. And there we go, nice and firm. Now all we do with that is put some salt water. This is ordinary tap water. And some table salt. Now it doesn't matter to a degree how much table salt you put in there. I'm not 100% sure actually. So I'm going to put the equivalent of around about two tablespoons of salt in there. And it's going to be really ad hoc. Yeah, it looks about two tablespoons to me. Okay, once you've got your water current controller, because that's more or less actually what that is, it controls the current. Once you get your water current controller, you need a battery and some jumper cables. And when you connect up the jumper cables, then the positive from this one goes to the positive on this one. Then we need another positive because that's the one that gets connected to the workpiece, and then we need a negative. Now, normally you connect the negative to the workpiece. This time we're going to connect the positive to the workpiece, because this is called negative DC welding. So you can do a negative DC welding, and with things like this, actually, it does give a slightly better job, apparently. Now, we could clip that straight onto the workpiece and clip that straight onto our welding rod, but those things 
here are a little wobbly and although it will hold on there so you can just do that it's a little wobbly it's a little hard to maintain control so an awesome thing is to use these things these things are called locking pliers we used to call them um, mole grips actually but they're called locking pliers and you adjust them to the got a grip and stick your rod in one then get a nice lot of control and then you just have to clip that onto there and that's your welding setup and then on this one same thing stick it on there and pop your workpiece into there and then that will form a nice tight grip on your workpiece I've obviously let it spring out There we go, so that would be our workpiece. Connect that one to there, other bit on top, and then we're going to weld with that. So let's give you a close up of that. Okay, we're all set up and ready to go. And let me warn you before I begin I am not the world's mightiest welder. So if I get something more than a pool of hot metal on there, I'm going to be super pleased. Anyway, here we go. Well, I'll tell you one thing, I may not be able to weld, but I can certainly melt metal. <laughs> okay, so there is no way you could describe me as a welder, but I'm okay with that, I'm a chemist. Um, but that's how to use this water bath to help weld a couple of bits of metal together. Now, you can weld just using batteries. You put about two batteries in series, it'll weld bits of metal. Uh, if you put four in series, it'll do an awesome job. So just the batteries by themselves can form an emergency welder. What this does is actually gives you some control over the amps. Uh, and um, I thought it was kind of cool, actually. So I thought I would share it with you as part of this series. And the main thing is, obviously, it's for those people who are a little scared of putting things into the wall at 230, 110 volts. We're talking about 12 volts, uh, 24 volts, going up to 48 volts. Under the uh, regulations, of course, 48 volts is known as low voltage. Here's our high ampage, so obviously wear your gear and don't forget your mask. So I thought I would share that with you because I thought it was a bit of fun. I hope you enjoyed the video and thank you very much for watching.